If you're an experienced Spring developer, this video is probably not for you. But if you're either beginning your adventure with Spring and Java, or you don't know Spring Web Flags and you want to learn it, you don't know Spring Data Redis, or you just want to see what is the process of building complete web application, like a real world application, I'm going to build a reactive link shortener. Link shortener is something like bit.ly, so something that takes a very long URL and then it gives you instead a very short one. So it's better just for pasting to social networks, for example. Technology wise, it will use Spring Boot 2, Spring Web Flags, Spring Data Redis, Redis itself. It will be built with Maven and for testing, it's going to use JUnit 4 and test containers. It also uses Lombok. So in the end, it's a pretty nice combination of frameworks. This video got pretty long, so I had to cut it into parts. And in the first part, you will see how to use Webflux, how to test Webflux, how to use Lombok and why to use Lombok. Most of the code is written in the TDD fashion. So also if you're interested in learning how to write it with test-driven development, this is also that something can be interesting for you. So if you have now 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to switch to an IDE. Let's start by creating a new Spring Boot application through Spring Boot Initializer in IntelliJ IDEA. I will need two dependencies. One will be Webflux and another will be Reactive Redis. Of course, we could add more, but at this stage, this is not needed. And I will call it Reactive Link Shortener. Let's start with an API layer and I will start with writing a test for it. So I will create a, a first test class that will be a link controller test. We don't have a link controller yet, but it's not an issue. I will annotate it with Spring Runner since we use JUnit4. And this will be a web flux test where I put that it refers to link controller class. It will be just a traditional REST controller that we are familiar from Spring MVC, but it will actually use Spring Web Flux under the hood. And in this test, since it's annotated with Web Flux test, we can now auto wire a class that is called Web Test Client. And Web Test Client will let us make HTTP calls in the test. So the first thing that I want to test is that it actually shortens link. With web test client, we have very nice fluent interface for writing this HTTP calls and expectations. So I will just do web test client post. And then I specify to which URI I am going to make this call and it will be slash link. I have to specify the content type that will be application JSON and I can put a body just as a string over here. And we can say that the body will be just a JSON with single property link. And as a value, just for the sake of test, I will put spring.io. And now if I do exchange, I can write what do I expect. And for now, I will just make that we expect the status to be uh, 200 successful. If I run this test right now, it will of course fail because there is no endpoint map to slash link. So let's implement it here. We will do post mapping to slash link and it will return a mono and it can be even mono of void for now. We don't need anything more. Let's call it create. This has to be a request body with an object that has this link property. So I will create here, create link request. And it will return mono empty. Create link request can be a static class with one field link. When I add getters and setters that have to be public and I run this test right now, it hopefully will pass.
Let's modify the test that it on, doesn't only check if the status is 200, but also check if we get the shortened link in the in the body. So we can do expect body, and then we can specify that the JSON path, and we put the JSON path like shortened link has a value that we can assert now with assert J. And let's say that we want it to be equal to localhost 8080. And this will be like AASS2211. Now, if I run the test, the test will, of course, fail. Because we don't return anything in the controller. So let's say that it will return create link response. And this will be also a static class. Not sure if it can be private with a field shortened link getters and setters like before. And instead of returning mono empty, it will be mono just new create link response with the same endpoint as we specified here. Let's run the test again. And the test has passed. It's cool. But to write such a simple code, we had to write really lots of boilerplate for this request and response objects. And how can we get rid of it? There is a nice library called Lombok. So if I add Lombok dependency and configure it properly, then I am able to really remove like all these getters, setters and controllers. I don't have to and, and sorry, and constructors. I don't specify the version here because Spring Boot assigns the version by itself. And I have to create a special file called Lombok config. I need to add two properties. One is called Lombok any constructor add constructor properties and set it to true and also config stop bubbling set to true. You can read more about these properties at the Lombok website. They have to be introduced since one of the recent versions. So now if I go back to link controller, I can get rid of these getters and setters and also here from the cons of the constructor and getters and setters and just annotate it with value from Lombok. I need to also make this class public, unfortunately. And now if I run the test again, it should pass as nothing happened. OK, let's implement the actual logic of shortening the link. And definitely, this logic will not be in the link controller. What we want to have instead is a link service that will encapsulate all the logic of shortening the link and, and getting the original link for the shortened link. So I will create a link service class here, annotated with a service from Spring Framework. We have to fix one thing over here. I can also use Lombok to add required arguments constructor. And then if I go back to link service, we want to have a method that will return mono of a string that will be called shorten link that will take just the original link as an argument. To shorten the link, we need a way to generate some random string. And there is a nice library that does it. It's called commons lang free. The latest version, as far as I remember, is 381. And now if I go back to the link service, I can generate a random key with a class random string utils, random alphabetic, and then I put how many characters and I think six is perfectly enough. This random key will need to be saved together with a original link somewhere to the database and we are using we are going to use Redis. But for now, we will just return mono just of this random key so that our controller continues to work properly. So here we take the link service and we shorten the link from the request. And then we map it to create link response. If I run the test now, it will fail.
And it failed because it says there's no qualifying bean of type link service, even though we annotated link service with a service annotation. And that's because Webflux test creates application context with a subset of our application. And it actually creates only stuff needed for Webflux plus our link controller. So all the dependencies uh, that link controller has have to be either created as well or have to be mocked. And in our case, we definitely don't want to create them. We just want to mock the link service over here. So we create a mock bean annotation. And here we will say that when link service shorten link is called with HTTPS spring.io, then we want to return mono just of the HTTP localhost 8080 and so on. And now if I run the test again, it should work. Oops, except the semicolon. Let's move back now to the link service and let's write test for it. This will be a simple unit test. There is no need for bringing the spring context. And the method that we want to test is that it shortens link pretty much the same as in, in controller, but we will test different stuff. So now I will call the method shorten link and we can put the same URL as before. And since it's, it's a reactive API, we need to use step verifier that is created from a publisher. And if we want to verify the next emitted element, we can use expect next matches where we just put the predicate. So in our case, it's just that result is not null. And we can also say that result length is greater than zero. Then we expect it to complete and then we just verify. So let's see if this test passes. Okay, but something isn't right here. So when we have this link service, it shortens the link and it returns just a random key. But what we would actually expect is something like we have in the link controller test that it returns the whole HTTP localhost. And this can be different depending on where do we deploy the application, what will be the domain name and so on. We can add a property to application properties. We can call it app base URL that in our case will be localhost 8080. And in the link service, we will just prefix what we return here with this domain. But let's start with modifying the test. So I will go to the link service test. And here I want to make sure that it's not that the result is not only not empty, but also that result starts with and let's say that we can put any domain here. So we can just put sound domain dot com. And the test would obviously fail right now. So let's go to the link service and let's inject this base URL. I will add here value annotation from Spring Framework where I say that this is app base URL. So that Spring on application startup will resolve this value from the application properties file. And now we need to modify the test to pass this HTTP some domain.com. In the link service, where we return the shortened link, we will take the base URL plus the random key. So now if I run the test again, not this one, link service test, let's see if it passes. If you managed to survive till this moment, congratulations. In the next part, I will cover developing repositories. So it will be integrating Spring Data Redis, integrating Redis and test containers. And if you like this video, please click the like button down below and yep, see you in the second part.